Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I am so stoked you're here, and for this special series of a little mini-series on the podcast, where I'm going to be sharing the six-step breath process for inner peace. And that's something that I write about and use the framework for in my book, Overcome the Overwhelm. So in this very first episode, I'm going to share with you a conversation I had with my friend, Alicia Kay, that was sponsored by Promo Corner. Promo Corner is an online digital marketing agency, essentially for the promotional products that is the branded merchandise industry, the industry that I come from where I built my first business up back in 2011 when I launched. And Promo Corner invited me to come on to their platform to host a six-part series all about the six-step breath process. That's when I tapped Alicia K, one of my good friends on the shoulder and was like, hey, as a trauma therapist, a, a certified clinical trauma therapist and certified somatic breathwork coach, I'd love to do this with you so that we could kind of ping pong back and forth what I share in the book and then also some of your insights as well. So what you're going to be hearing in this episode is a conversation between Alicia and I about the first step in the six step breath process. And I would really encourage you to listen to these in order because each step builds off of one another. But before we get started with the episode, I wanted to just give you a little bit of a backstory on how this book, Overcome the Overwhelm, was come to be birthed and the six step breath process for inner peace. And before we get into that, If you're new to the Soul Seeker podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a rating and review for the show. By doing that, it helps the algorithm to so that other people can discover the podcast as well. I've been doing the Soul Seeker podcast for five years now. It's wild to think about because Soul Seeker was my fourth, maybe fifth podcast. And it's the only one that withstood the test of time. My original podcast was What Up Silicon Valley with my co-host Sergio Oliveri back in 2017. I remember the day like it was yesterday where we recorded our very first episode on January 17th in 2017. And we were just literally talking to my computer. It was like that scene in Zoolander where they're trying to get the files, quote unquote, out of the computer. They're like, files are in the computer and they're like dancing around like monkeys. That's what Sergio and I were like uh, on the very first podcast back on January 17th, 2017. So to just having done multiple podcasts over the years and being over 200 episodes in five years in on the Soul Seeker podcast, I think it really goes to show that how passionate I am about this specific podcast. And it's really my work of being of service to help raise the consciousness of humanity from the fallen state. And I can't do that alone. So by leaving a rating and review specifically on Spotify or wherever you're listening to the podcast, it helps 
other people discover the podcast so that the pod can grow and other people can learn from the wisdom of uh, the guests that I bring on to this show. So thank you so much for listening to that short little ramble. Let's get into the pre-ramble, if you will, before I uh, kick it off to the pre-recorded uh, six-part video series, episode one with Alicia K. So overcome the overwhelm. You know, 2023 was a really difficult and challenging year for myself. And I know I'm not alone. It was a year that brought challenges and and turned people's lives upside down. Not everyone, but I know a lot of people really started to feel it in March of 2023. A lot of long withstanding relationships, long time relationships started to get stirred up and eventually end up in a separation. And I know that from friends, family, colleagues, and stuff I've read and seen online. In so many ways, in different ways, 2023 was extremely challenging. I was not immune to that. For me, I'm not going to get into the specifics too much, but it was a relationship. And it was, I believe, March, no, it was February 27th of 2023 that kicked it all off. And that really led to one event after another where 2023 ended up being the most challenging and difficult year of my life. I've talked about this on other podcasts where I was on other people's podcasts and you can hear them on George Bryan's podcast or Vanessa Spiva's. I'm not going to get into that in this podcast. I speak about it a little bit in the book, but for the most part, I don't speak about what happened too much publicly because there's certain things that I just want to honor to my own privacy and have respect for the people that were involved. And having said that, I just want to emphasize, emphasize the point that like, if you don't already know everything that went down, I'm not trying to be um, vague about it. I'm just trying to honor privacy. And it was massive. It was so big where it was debilitating. It was soul crushing. And it sent me in the deepest and darkest dark night of the soul that I'd ever been in in my life. And most of all, more than anything else, I'm just so grateful for it. And I'm so grateful that four years previously, I started down the spiritual journey because had I not been doing the work for the past four years, I don't know if I would have came out on the other end of this dark night of the soul. Really. I don't, and we can breathe into that. And just honor everyone's process. And I want, if anything, like a core teaching that is so cliche, but I think it's important to reiterate is things happen for you and they don't happen to you. And it's a cliche, right? But the thing is, in being an integration guide where I help people integrate spirituality into everyday life, I see a lot of people that are either colleagues or clients, friends even, where they say all the right things, but when push comes to shove, they aren't actually walking the walk. They're just talking the talk. So when I say things happen for you, not to you, please don't just roll your eyes and be like, yeah, yeah, I heard that one before. I want you to really think about it this way. When we're going through a dark night of the soul and our entire world is turned upside down, can we adopt a game time mentality? Uh, let's go. Because think about it this way. If you're learning about doing the quote unquote work and you're learning it all in terms of like theory, when it comes to actually apply doing the work, the lessons you've been learning, if you don't integrate and you don't apply them to the basic foundational mindset shift of things are happening for me, looking as an opportunity, then what's the point of doing the work at all? And that was the mindset shift that helped me get through 2023. As hard and difficult as it was, I looked at it as an opportunity. I looked at it as an opportunity and an invitation for me to lean in deeper to doing the work. And that is where the six step breath process for inner peace was born. I found myself saying after a few months, I don't understand this because this is the most challenging time of my life. Yet day to day, 
and moment to moment, I feel great. It was mind boggling because from a 3D grounded perspective, myself or anyone else that knew about the situation at hand could look at it and be like, how are you handling that? How would anyone handle that? And that is because that's just how challenging the situation was. And I was able to zoom out and be like, you know what, maybe this is very complicated and challenging and difficult and hard and not only depressing, but demoralizing and debilitating and numbing and all the things. But at the same time, I feel great. Not only moment to, not only day to day, but moment to moment. How can I possibly feel great moment to moment when everything else is going on? That led me on a journey of being like, well, am I spiritually bypassing? Meaning like, oh, I'm just saying I feel good. Toxic positivity almost. And am I not really actually leaning into this? And I'm, am I dissociating in any sort of way? So it really got me to start to gaslight myself and question myself. And all of this throughout all of it all throughout all of it, I just became more honest, raw, vulnerable with myself and breathe through it all. And that's literally how the six step breath process was born. I started doing it for myself, started sharing it with clients. It was working with clients as well. This was the summer of 2023. And then um, let's see. I had no intentions of sharing it in a book. In fact, Last year, I had the idea come through of a book title called Mastering Worthiness. And I, you know, I like to move fast sometimes and it can be hard for me to slow down. And I already saw like the book being born. I already saw like a course, Mastering Worthiness. And I started to dive into my own worthiness. And as I spoke about it more, I learned and I realized that it's not just me. Adya Shanti talks about it as well. He's a spiritual teacher. We all suffer from a core wound of worthiness. And I believe really more than anything else, I do believe this, that we all, at its very core, all of our limiting beliefs are worthiness. And I think we all struggle to a certain degree of worthiness. And Adya Shanti specifically um, describes it and outlines it really well. And I took a ton of meticulous notes on that so I could reference his work. But I, uh, I realized as much as like I wanted to share and everything else, I was like, you know what? I, I can't write a book or teach people how I'm mastering worthiness, how to master worthiness, because that's something I'm currently in right now. At some point, I don't know if it's a year from now. I don't know if it's years from now. I don't know if I will ever get there. And that's okay if I don't. But I don't ever want to write the book Mastering Worthiness or lead a program called Mastering Worthiness until I fully feel within every cell of my body that I've mastered my worthiness, because I haven't. I'm still struggling with my worthiness. Have I made progress? I've made progress by leaps and bounds. And through that, the reason why I've been able to master my, or not master, but work on my worthiness is because of the six step breath process. And going back to last year, again, I had no intention of sharing this in the form of a book. I went to Bali at the end of last year, and there was a lot of shadow work in Bali, not to get into all that, but I came home and I started to alchemize that shadow work in writing and through the writing and journaling, this book, Overcome the Overwhelm, wanted to come through. I literally wrote the book and uh, wrote three quarters of the book in about two weeks. And then it took me another two months or so, I would say, to fully wrap it up and finalize it and edit it and everything else. And what you're going to hear in this episode is the first step of the six step breath process. So with that, welcome to the episode. Please make sure that you just listen to these episodes from uh, the first one all the way through to the sixth one. Don't jump around because they all build off each other. I like to call this a sequential pod series. So it all builds off one another. So I hope you enjoy the episode and I'll see you on the other side. Hey there, and welcome to a brand new series called Overcoming Overwhelm, sponsored by Promo Corner. My name's Sam Kaber, and with me today in the rest of the series is my good friend, Alicia K. Alicia is a licensed and certified trauma therapist 
And many of you know me from the promotional products industry from back in the day with the personal brand of Swag Sam and being named to the rising stars in 2020. My name is Sam Caber. Used to go by Swag Sam in this industry and a lot of people know me here uh, for virtual assistance, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're talking about today and in the rest of these episodes is specifically how to overcome the overwhelm which is actually the title of my latest book, which is now available for you to get on Amazon. There's a link here for you to check it out if you're interested. But in this series, Overcoming Overwhelm, myself along with Alicia are going to walk through the six-step breath process. And the word breath is an acronym. And this acronym is something very simple that you can use throughout your day to catch your emotions and process them in real time. And in this first episode, we're going to walk through step one, which is breathing to slow down. And I asked Alicia to come on the podcast because we're both certified somatic breathwork practitioners. And she has the lens from being a therapist and helping a lot of people with their trauma as a therapist, where I have helped a lot of people with their trauma and breathwork journeys, addition to even deeper, deeper healing journeys to address all of these different sorts of traumas within the body. So with that, thank you for being here and checking it out. Alicia, I would love for you to fill in the gaps and just kind of introduce yourself to the listeners as and everyone watching the show as we dive into the, co- the topic of overcoming overwhelm. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Excited to be here. And I can't wait to dive into the series with you. I am a full supporter of using the breath to overcome overwhelm. It is something that I teach in my practice all the time with my clients. And I tell my clients all the time that if I would have had the information that I have now and the training that I have now on somatic breath work, it would have saved me a ton of money. Like I have been a trauma therapist for 20 years now, which is like two decades long. And I've really worked hard at trying to figure out the answer for what it's going to take to help people clear out their emotion, clear out their negative beliefs, clear out their doubts, clear out whatever is going on in their mind that is essentially causing them angst in the body, stress in their life. And so I learned all of these tools and I have an amazing array of things that I help people with when it comes to my tool belt. But somatic breathwork is a game changer for me. So that was like the icing on the cake as far as the missing piece for what I was doing one-on-one with people. Because when you can get them in touch with their body and the innate with the innate intelligence that's in there that knows how to get the body and brain back into equilibrium, like you don't have to think about what to do, right? It's a felt sense. We have an intuition. So it really has become the one modality that I wish I had a really long time ago um, that is just now coming into existence with how effective using the breath to calm the body and the nerves um, in your life. It's just such an amazing tool that is readily available to all of us. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. I first came across breath work in 2019 when I was going through my numbing depression that got me into really addressing my own inner world and mental health and spirituality and all the things. And when I say the word breath work, and when both of us say the word breath work, it's, it's fascinating because it is such a big term. And I remember when I first came across this uh, breath work journey, as I'll call it in 2019, the people that I did this experience with, they told me that breath work is going to be like how yoga was 20 years ago. And at the time when they said that, I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. Like this was an amazing experience. I literally feel reborn and nothing else but myself and my breath just breathing intensely for an hour. But I I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. But these days with the rapid pace of breath work gaining popularity, it is pretty much uh, the case that, yes, this is very much on the rise, how yoga was before. And I'm a yoga instructor now as well. And one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand about yoga is that there's eight limbs of yoga and just one of those limbs or branches is the actual movement. It's called asana in Sanskrit. Another one of those is the breath. 
So it's kind of like, okay, we can look at yoga and think about it as a workout or whatever. But one of the main things in yoga, one of the eight limbs actually is the breath. So a lot of what we're talking about, yes, it's uh, popular in recent years. I'm talking like the last five, 10 years, maybe you could say 20 years, but it's ancient. It's thousands of years old. We're tapping into this wisdom. So with that, let's just simplify this big term of breath work because basically there's two things to know and it all starts with the nervous system. We have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest, and the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight. Now, unfortunately, kind of like what Alicia was saying earlier, many of us are just maintaining, not even maintaining, we're, we're trying our best to, to move through the world with all the overwhelm and stressors and all the things. And what does that lead us in? What, what, how are we feeling? We're in fight or flight. We're in the sympathetic nervous system all the time. But the thing is, we're not chasing saber tooth, or we're not getting chased by saber tooth tigers. We don't have all of these, these uh, present threats for our, our survival, but our nervous system feels like we do. Because what I said earlier, and Alicia as well, we have all these traumas and different energies that get stored in the body. And we've, uh, many of us have disconnected from our body. Now, one thing that I'd be interested to hear from you, Alicia, is when I first started going down this path of like being intentional on my quote unquote healing journey, if you'd like, I started to compare my traumas to other people. And I think comparing, and I think I know comparing your traumas is a losing battle. We all have traumas. And I'd love to hear from you being a trauma therapist, Alicia, like how do you speak about trauma and like allowing people to be like, oh, wow, like, yeah, I do have traumas because most of us are like, like, we don't want to look at at that. Yeah. The thing I love about the discussion of trauma is it's not, it's not what happens to you. It's what is left in the body after what happens to you. Right. And so every one of us have some experience where we have some emotional thing that occurs to us that is undigested. Right. That's really unprocessed through, meaning it's able to complete the full action. We can let out the emotion. We can feel it. We can heal it. and We can get to the other side of it. But because we live in a society that doesn't accept the full range of emotion or necessarily know how to do with that or deal with that, we then feel like we're left carrying that weight of that experience on our own. And so that's how I like to describe trauma, right? It's not always the big T traumas that we think about. It's sometimes the emotional trauma or the felt sense of not being heard, not being seen, not being validated, not feeling important, not being able to use our voice. Like it's also those like secondary things and that energy that get trapped internally where we then develop a part of us that wants to compare our trauma or compare our life to other people, right? It's like, I don't have it as bad as that person. It's like, and that is a part of you that's actually coming up with a way to avoid whatever you're dealing with emotionally, right? So we, we develop this avoidance system and internally to negate what we're feeling or to deny our feeling because that's what we've been conditioned to do that's socially acceptable. So I always try to really identify like it's not about the other and the fact that your mind is telling yourself that story that it's not as bad as or it's not trauma means that it's almost like dissociated or you're, de you're detached from that experience. A hundred percent. Thank you for uh, explaining that and breaking that, that down. And as you're speaking, I, I remembered a funny dream from last night and it just came to me hearing you speak. But now I have long hair. It's a newer thing for me in the past couple of years. But I woke up in the middle of the night and I got a haircut. It was supposed to be just like, you know, a regular ro routine haircut. I keep my hair still long. But then they shaved it all off. And I, I freaked out in my dream. And I remember waking up in bed and running my hand through my hair. I'm like, okay, good. I good, good, good. I do have long hair. And I was joking with some buddies on a group text this morning, just about whatever. And, and all of a sudden, for some reason, I shared that dream with them. 
And I, and as I was texting them, I realized, oh, wow, like 15 years ago in college, there was a, this older gentleman, his name's Barber John, and he used to go to all the, the fraternities and just all the clubs and organizations on campus and everyone loved him. Barber John, he had a tagline, not the most uh, mindful thing to say, but his tagline was, if we can't make you look good, you're ugly. Uh, it was funny at the time though, right? So anyways, he was testing out a new barber and it was a woman and he was offering free haircuts for the different barbers. So I went in one time and I couldn't see myself in the mirror and I had, you know, a short hair, but like, you know, generally not like bald. Right. And next thing you know, she spins me around in the mirror and I'm basically bald at this point because she kept messing up that she she just shaved it all off. And when I was recounting this story with my buddies this morning via text, I said something about how I was traumatized from that. And it was my dreams, uh, my psyche processing a trauma from 15 years ago. Now, I bring that up for two reasons. One, it's a little tongue in cheek that it's saying it's a trauma. But the other part is like, actually, it kind of is. You know, we don't need to compare that. Like I left there thinking I was going to look one way and then looked a toll another way. Right. So the reason why I bring that up is it is so easy to be like looking at something out of your childhood. And when you were told, like, just be quiet or like, you know, something where your parents meant it with love and they weren't necessarily being mean, but we don't have the tools. We don't understand that as little kids. And we internalize that and that gets stuck in the body. So all of that to say, we're going to unpack all of this more. But for right now, we're getting we're back on track with the parasympathetic system and the nervous, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. Most of us are walking around in fight or flight. That is sympathetic nervous system. These deep cathartic breath work journeys are opportunities to remove and process those emotions, those energies, those traumas that have been stored in the body for a lifetime. And that is the, uh, mimicking a trauma response that puts you into the sympathetic nervous system. But really what, what I'm more concerned about, and I'm sure Alicia is as well, is teaching people the tools how to shift into parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. As much as I love cracking people wide open and, and seeing their release and how much lighter they feel afterwards when they address these traumas that are stored in the body, these breathwork journeys are something you could do maybe once in your life, maybe once a year or once a quarter, but it's not something you would necessarily do every day or every week unless you're really, really going through it. For most of us, we just want to feel good, right? That's why we go to the gym in the morning. That's why we drink our coffee to give us energy. Whatever your thing is, I break it down in physical, mental, and emotional. And really, breathwork has the ability to address all those things. So in this first step of the six-step breath process, it's to breathe to slow down. And I'm going to give you guys just a high-level overview so this makes sense. This is all from my new book, Overcome the Overwhelm, which you can find on Amazon right now. And the word breath is an acronym. The B is breathe to slow down. The R is relax to feel. The E is energy to reveal. The A is accept to surrender. The T is transform into empowering beliefs. And the H is habits to integrate. Now, here's the thing. Many of us, I hope some of you guys listening, have some sort of morning routine, whether it's just stretching or it's meditation, it is breath work, it's journaling, or it's getting outside in nature, going for a walk, whatever it is. Most of us try to wake up, get going so that we feel clear and ready to attack, ready to attack the day. Yet what happens for many busy professionals especially in the promotional products industry, and I know this having been in the industry almost 15 years, is there are so many fires we have to put out. There are stressors left and right. In a lot of ways, that's what led me to this work because I was operating in fight or flight so much. But now I know with the six-step breath process is when those stressors come in, the body actually processes emotions in 90 seconds. And emotions are energy in motion. 
So even if we do everything in the morning, and even if we have a great evening routine so we get a good night's sleep too, sandwiched in the middle of the day is all these fires for a lot of us or different sorts of stressors that might come up. And we don't think we have time to address them. Literally, I've gotten an email recently that said, I don't even have time to breathe. I got another email a few weeks ago that said, I wish I had more time for mindfulness in the day. I'm telling you guys what Alicia and I are teaching you right now and what I'm teaching you in the book, Overcome the Overwhelm, is not about adding more things to your day. It's about awareness and allowing yourself to feel those energies so that they can move through you. So with that said, the very first step, breathe to slow down. Let's pay a scene. Let's play a scene, right? I'm a distributor. So a client reaches out and they say they need something in five days. All of a sudden, what happens to me? I'm like, oh, uh, I got to do everything. I got to call the supplier. I got, well, first I got to ask them, okay, so what's the product you want? How many do you want? Okay, let me look at the different suppliers that might be able to make that happen. Let me make some phone calls. Let me figure it out. Now I got to get that to the client. Then I'm waiting and constantly checking my email, see if the client is going to, or my text messages, see if they're going to respond. And then all of this to say, they decide they change their mind. Or maybe they decide that they are moving forward. Either way, Think about the chain of events that are going on. I get the stress that's coming from the client. I'm now putting the stress on the factory. The factory is working, the supplier, they're working with everyone internal who's now feeling that stress. That comes back to me and now I'm pushing it back to the client and then the client has their internal people. This is literally a ripple event of stress. Whereas if in the moment we can just slow down right? Okay. I'm, I'm just using this as an example. You could apply this to any situation in your life. So you feel something. All right. Let me breathe. And the easiest way that you can breathe is just inhaling through your nose all the way up, sipping in a bit more at the top and through the mouth, exhale. In the next episode of the series, I'm going to tell you why that is the most effective form of breathing. Right now, what's most important is just to slow down because a simple rule of thumb as it relates to breath work when we want to get into rest and digest is elongating the exhales. Inhaling up through the nose and letting the exhale be longer than the inhale. It's that simple. We don't need to get into anything else. In my book, you learn all about breath work and, and more of the science and data and different practices. But for the purposes of this episode, when you feel an emotion that you don't want to feel, allow yourself to feel it by breathing and slowing down to be with it. And with that, Alicia, I'd love to hear what's coming up for you. Oh, so many things, Sam. I think it's, it's incredible exactly what you're talking about because we have all been there. We've been very conditioned to think that the faster we move, the more we're going to get done. And in my experience, that's actually not the case, right? So it's really teaching people to get out of the brain and into the body and have that immediate nervous system reset to create space, right? When we create space in the body with the breath, we actually create better decision-making and better programming and less overwhelm in the brain. It is scientifically proven that elongating your exhale and in through, inhaling through the nose resets you back into that space where you actually can feel calmer and you can make those decisions and you can do the things that you want to do without feeling frantic or scattered or putting more adrenaline into your bloodstream that just causes more stress, right? When you're in that stressed out state, you're not effective to yourself to your clients, to anything around you because you don't have any room to take on anything else. Like you're, you're contracted, right? And I just love, it's so simple because we, we all know what it feels like to be in a stressed out state, all of us. Um, well, most of us, because um, when you're not in a stressed out state, you're actually clear, you're calm. You can handle that email that comes in and you're like, yeah, okay, I got this. I might have to rearrange some things, but I'm aware of my state of being and then I can move forward. So I love the idea of that awareness of what's going on in my body of like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to act like that. I don't want to be like this today. Let me just take a couple breaths. And it's simple. It's literally that simple for a reset. 
At the end of the day, it is also simple. And as humans, we just tend to overcomplicate. And this this system, this framework is about simplifying it and coming back to just ease, right? So within the spirit of providing you guys with tools, uh, here's a call to action. And no, it's not uh, to follow us or anything like that. It, it's something for you so that you can start to experience this on your own. And this is one of the things that I've I've done been doing the past few years and I share with my clients and I get amazing feedback on it. And to Alicia's point, it is so simple. For the rest of the few minutes on this episode here, I just invite you to focus on your inhales and exhales. As you hear my voice, as you hear Alicia's voice, nothing crazy here. Just slowing down your inhale through your nose and letting your exhale be even slower than the inhale. In other words, to intentionally and consciously be connected with your breath. And what I teach people is when you start to engage with your breath, when you're in conversation with another person, your mind actually starts to slow down as well. Because so often when we're talking with someone, we're thinking about what we're going to say next. And many of us, that's not news. Many of us are aware of this, but it's like, okay, what do you actually do with that? Focus on your breath. By focusing on your breath, you will be more present with them and you will retain that information as well. So your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to focus on your breath in conversations in the next day. And with that, this is the first episode of the six episode series. This one went a little bit longer than what we are intending for the other ones. The other ones will be shorter. The reason why this one is a little bit longer is to give you more context. And I hope you guys enjoyed it so much. Once again, my name is Sam Cabert. You can find my new book and all the information about me at samcabert.com. Alicia, your website is aliciakcoaching.com. K-A-Y, is that correct? Got it. Alicia K, K A Y coaching.com. I hope you guys got so much out of this episode and we can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for listening to this to the very end. I want to give a special shout out to Alicia K for being such a, an amazing co host to unpack all the lessons around step one. And thank you as well to Lori Moore and the whole promo corner team for hosting this special series that I am repurposing on the Soul Seeker podcast. If you enjoyed this, please consider sharing it on your social media or sharing the link directly with a friend. Helps the show grow. Another easy way you can give back to the show is simply by subscribing, rating, and reviewing on podcast on Spotify as that helps the al- algorithm. Thank you so much. And if you're interested in grabbing your copy of Overcome the Overwhelm, just hit the show notes and that will take you to a link to get a copy of Overcome the Overwhelm at a very affordable price. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next episode.